Hey! Today I'm going to be talking about the smallest Jupyter Hub distribution, the littlest Jupyter Hub, and I'm going to show you how you can provide Jupyter notebooks for your students in just a few minutes. My name is Georgiana Dolokan and I'm working as a Jupyter Hub and Binder contributor in residence. And this means I get to help the community with the little things that happen around the project. My love for open source started when I was a Jupyter Hub outreach intern about two years ago and it only grew since. So let's get started. The littlest Jupyter Hub is the smallest Jupyter Hub distribution. It's the smallest because it was designed to fit inside only one server alongside its users. This server can be anything from a bare metal one to just one in the cloud. The term distribution is pretty common when talking about Jupyter Hub because distributions help make a uh, Jupyter Hub deployment easier. Personally, I like to think about uh, distributions as being the superheroes saving the day. So, a Jupyter Hub distribution is a hub that has been tailored to fit a particular use case or a group of use cases that uh, have some common requirements. For TLJH's case, the goal in mind when building this project was to provide an easy to deploy hub that doesn't require that much maintenance and uh, where all the users share an environment but still have their own home directories where they can work um, independently. But because TLJH is a single server, it can only support up to around 100 users. However, this makes it perfect for, teach for teaching small classes of students and eliminates thus the complexity and costs of managing a large scale hub when this, is a when this, is, uh, this isn't actually needed. So the teacher is usually the admin user that can configure the environment for the students in an easy way without too much trouble and without needing, to, uh, needing any special Jupyter Hub deployment skills. At its core, TLJH is made up of two components, Jupyter Hub and Traffic. Traffic is the proxy um, that's used for Jupyter Hub to route each user to its notebook server. You can think about it as being the map of the hub. Usually Jupyter Hub uses configurable HTTP proxy, but for TLJH, uh, we went uh, with traffic because traffic also helps making HTTPS certificate acquisition easier uh, because it offers um, let's encrypt support. So once TLGH gets installed, Jupyter Hub and Traffic will continuously run in the background and talk to each other um, in order to make things happen. When installed, TLGH will create two environments on the system, one for the hub and one for the users. The hub one is a Python virtual environment and it's where Jupyter Hub and Traffic binary gets installed. The user one is a mini Conda environment. It's owned by root and shared between the TL TLGH users. This is where the user's packages are and should be installed by the admins. Every time a user opens up a terminal from uh, Jupyter Hub, this is the default environment. But if you were to SSH in, uh, uh, in your TLGH server, in order to install some user packages, you have to manually activate it. And don't forget to do this because this can easily turn into a source of confusion and a pain point um, if um, you forget to do you, if you forget to do it and um, don't find the packages you think you installed. So if your deployment needs something different than the defaults that TLGH ships with, there are four available ways to modify uh, um, your TLGH. The recommended way is to use TLGH config command line tool. This can be used to modify the most frequent and common customizable parts of both the hub and traffic. Things like ports, authenticator, memory limits, and so on. The other three are called escape hatches because they are meant to be used for when a deployment requires configuring things that are not supported by TLJH config. They allow you to provide extra configuration um, that will be merged with the base one in order to overwrite the defaults. These are a bit more complex because they require some prior knowledge about the format and what can actually go into these files. So let's start a demo and see all of this in action. Um, for the demo, I'm planning. Uh, I'm planning to use DigitalOcean uh, to host the to, uh, to host the TLGH deployment. Uh, for that, I need to create a droplet. I already have one created and ready, uh, waiting um, because um, we don't want to wait uh, the entire six minutes for TLGH to install. Okay, so all of this um, is in the documentation. 
I'm choosing a plan here, um, memory and CPUs. Um, this can later be resized, so there's no worries if you uh, over or underestimate this. You um, you can find in the docs some uh, um, uh, some information uh, on how to how to make um, this decision. Okay, so here we uh, copy the command uh, to install TLGH from the documentation. It's not a, a very uh, complicated command but it's quite long and i don't want to to break it okay so here we're just stating the first admin user and um which we, we choose to show the a progress page while while tlgh is building we give it a name here um okay and hit create um the droplet creation shouldn't take uh, longer than a few seconds, uh, maybe up to a minute. Um, I'm not going into the already the one that uh, we already created because I want to show you the progress page that um, it's a new feature that we added in order to um, allow uh, people and admins to access the logs in case they suspect something went wrong during the installation without needing to SSH into the server, which can um, be a bit complicated um, if you don't follow a tutorial or something. Okay, so um, we copy the IP address of the recently created um, droplet, paste it in the browser, and we should be seeing the loading page when it's ready right now. I think it, it, it also takes a few seconds for it to, to get up. Okay, so this is the landing page. Uh, you have the view logs button. Uh, refresh them to update them and um, stay on this page um, and when PLGH is uh, is ready you will be redirected to the login page okay so now let's go to the hub that we already that's already um, installed I didn't do anything to it and um, I follow the same steps I did um, for this last one so we are using the first admin user here and we're setting it, um, its password um, I um, suggest you change the first use authenticator is not uh, super secure um, and it's best and um, very convenient to log in with um, um, providers like Google github whatever works best for you also um, you can change the password so I, I I've just set up a password for it but I can easily go to um, uh, hub authenticator change password in the browser and change uh, and change this one if I'm not happy with it or um, something like that. Okay, so we have a hub. Uh, we only need uh, some users right now. Um, for this, sorry, have to go back to the um, panel. Okay, so go to the admin menu and. Um, we're going to add a few users just to show how easy it is to do this. Okay, so first user here. And we'll, I can also add other admins uh, that will have the right to install user packages and configure um, the system. Okay, so um, let's see now uh, how we use nbgit puller with this recently created um, Litlus Jupyter Hub. So, um, we have to use the link generated pa generator page here uh, where we um, paste the, um, the IP address of our hub that we just created. Sorry, this is the window. Okay. Um, the IP uh, repository I want to share with the other users uh, through this link that gets created by nbgit puller. Okay, so this is the link. If I access this from the admin account, this will pull that repo and make a copy in my home directory. You can see um, things happening already. Okay, so I'm already here. I have my own copy of the notebook. I have some requirements here uh, that I can install and I should be installing as an admin user so that uh, the other uh, users uh, that don't have pseudo rights um, um, so that they are able to run the notebook. Okay, so let's say now that I don't like this classical uh, um, notebook interface and I'd rather be using the JupyterLab one. This is simple. You can edit the URL and um, use the JupyterLab interface. 
but this is only temporary and if you want this to be persistent and um, if you want this interface for all the users uh, you you can um, do this from uh, the terminal by using the TLA T uh, the little Jupyter Hub config um, command line tool so I'm gonna be doing this right now have to access this with sudo this is why other users users cannot do this, cannot configure the system and change things. Um, okay, so uh, this is the command to install the TLGH for uh, um, all of the users of the systems of the system. And now all we have to do is to tell the hub to reload its um, configuration using the same TLGH config tool. And um, this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed my um, my demo. Let me just quickly share my slides with you. Okay, so uh, use TLGH uh, whenever um, you want to provide Jupyter Notebooks for your students fast and pain-free. Um, and if your class or classes don't, don't go up to much over 100 users, uh, you can reach out to the members of the Jupyter community on the discourse forum for questions, asking for help, saying hi, or just to share your experience about using uh, TLGH. Um, contributions are super welcomed and all contributions from code to docs or just helping other people other people are um, important and valuable. Search for the I want to contribute badge on the GitHub uh, page of um, the Little Jupyter Hub and that will get you straight to the contributing uh, docs. Thank you so much for uh, watching this talk and for using the Little Jupyter Hub. Bye!